Kia ora Year 12 and 13. Here's question 1b from the 2017 Scholarship Calculus paper. Now there are three ways to solve this problem, so I'm going to make three separate videos um, to explore them so that it doesn't get too long. And in this first one, I'm going to solve this problem using the sum and the product of the roots for a quadratic equation. So here's the question. We've got this equation here, which looks like a quadratic um, just in slightly odd form, and it's got two real roots, and they're of equal magnitude, but opposite in sign. So we have to prove that BC over A is negative. So looking at the original expression, we can see that we've got P minus 1 in here and P plus 1 in here, but we don't have anything with a P in it in what I'm trying to prove. So you might think that we're trying to eliminate P from something in here. So now think back to what you know about quadratics. Um, a quadratic, assuming that it's got a positive x squared coefficient, looks like this. Now we know quite a bit, if we know it's got two real roots of equal magnitude but opposite in sign, then we know that it's going to cross twice, right, and at different values. And I'm going to call those alpha and negative alpha. So because they're equal in sign, we know that this is symmetric around the y-axis. And that leads me to a whole other way to solve this problem, um, which is using the discriminant. Okay, and Most of you probably will have tried that way, and that way works really well too, but the sum and product of the roots is probably slightly faster. So we're going to do it this way first. So the first step is to rearrange my quadratic as follows. We're going to get x squared minus bx times p plus 1 is equal to ax plus c times p minus 1. I'm going to partially expand this. I'm not going to do every single term because my goal is to collect up the x squared coefficient, the x coefficient and the constant term. So I'm not going to split up the p plus 1 x squared, I'll just leave it like that minus b p plus 1 x equals a times p minus 1 x plus c times p minus 1. So now we're on our way. We need to rearrange this in a form where I can think about um, my usual quadratic equation form. We're going to be working extensively with this form of a quadratic. So I'm going to do that on the next slide. So we've got to here p plus 1 x squared minus b times p plus 1 x. Now I'm going to subtract those two terms from both sides of the equation. That'll give me minus a times p minus 1 x minus c times p minus 1 and that equals 0. Now we'll collect up like terms. So we have p plus 1 x squared minus this minus c times p minus 1 equals 0. Now the sum of the roots in a quadratic is equal to negative b over a. The b and the a are not the same as the b and the a above. The b and the a come from my standard quadratic. Here we know that alpha is the first root and negative alpha is the second root. So that means that alpha plus the second root is equal to zero. So zero must be equal to negative b over a. And we're assuming, since we've got a quadratic, a is not equal to 0. That's a good thing. So that means that b, my second term in my quadratic, is equal to 0. Um, and we could see that. We'll see that in the next video. We're thinking about the discriminant and the roots anyway. Um, but we also know that the product of the roots, a times negative, sorry, alpha times negative alpha, is equal to c over a. So we're going to get negative alpha squared is equal to c over a. Remember where I'm heading is that I want to show that b c over a is negative. So this is already looking a bit like this. 
but we're not anywhere near there yet. Right, so all I have to do next is to take this coefficient and equate it to zero. So we know that negative b times p plus 1 plus a times p minus 1 is equal to zero. So rearranging that, I'm going to rearrange it to get all the terms with p on one side. So we have b times p plus 1 equals negative a times p minus 1, which gives me p minus 1 over p plus 1 is equal to negative b over a. I have skipped a couple of tiny lines in there, but you should be able to get from here to here. Or you're probably not watching the right video. Um, so that turns out to be useful. Now the first time you do this kind of problem, you might um, do what I did and solve for p equals. That's fine, it's going to generate some extra work. Um, but a student on Tuesday morning pointed out that this was a much more efficient way to go, so I'm going to do that now. So we get p minus 1 over p plus 1 is equal to negative b over a. Then we're going to come back to this condition using the product of the roots. So we've got negative alpha squared is equal to c over a, where c is the constant term. So in my equation, it's negative c times p minus 1 over a, which was p plus 1, because remember that my expanded quadratic was this, p plus 1 x squared minus blah 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 times x, we've dealt with that already, minus c p minus 1. All right, so this term here is that one, and this coefficient here is this one. But from above, we've shown that p minus 1 over p plus 1 is equal to negative b over a. So we've got negative c times negative b over a, which is bc over a. So we've got down to here, negative alpha squared is equal to bc over a. Alpha squared is equal to negative bc over a. which must be positive since alpha squared is positive. So I'm not going to use a last slide, I'm just going to pop the very last step in here. Therefore BC over A is negative as required. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to do another video looking at how to do it using the discriminant directly, and then I'm going to do a third video showing you Nicholas Patel's really cool, efficient way to do it. Okay, but first we'll do the discriminant one. Thanks for watching.